What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we'll be doing a full in-depth review on the Bissell Power Force Turbo Pet, specifically the new 3332 model. Now this machine was just recently released by Bissell, it's an update to the previous 1797 and 2190 models, uh, not, no, excuse me, 1701, but either way, the this particular machine is one you can buy right now at Walmart for 68 bucks. And of course the price does vary a little bit, but it's usually between 60 and 90 bucks is usually its general range of price whenever you buy these at Walmart. And generally that's the only place you're gonna find these, but a lot of people shop there, so it's pretty relevant. Now this particular machine, like I mentioned earlier, is an updated version of the Bissell 2190 and the Bissell 1701, which are identical to this machine in almost every way other than some minor cosmetic changes and improvements to the design. Now, right off the bat, I'll mention all the improvements this machine has over the previous unit that may make it a solid upgrade if you're looking to potentially upgrade your machine. This particular machine, the star of the show, is that it has a squeegee on the bottom to allow it better bare floor pickup. So this machine actually does pick up better on bare floors. Of course, there's still no brushful shutoff, so it's still gonna potentially scratch bare floors if you have really delicate floors. But if you have mostly carpets and you just have maybe a kitchen and a bathroom that has tile or some sort of some sort of floor that's not as prone to scratching, then it could be a solid option as it does clean much better on bare floors than the outgoing model. So right there, and the nice thing is that unlike the squeegee on the standard Helix that I reviewed last month, this squeegee does not cause the machine to be harder to push or pull on carpets. So it actually doesn't have any sort of adverse trade-off like it does on the standard Helix. Another reason why I recommend this over the standard Helix for the extra couple bucks you get. Also compared to that version, you also get a better cyclone setup, a turbo brush, a longer cord, and a stretch hose, as well as a wider cleaning path. So there's no reason to buy the standard Helix over this turbo variant. If you're deciding between the two, let this be your decision, get the turbo. But right off the bat, the other changes this machine has is it fixed two issues that I had with the previous generation design. The first was the pitch of the motor. This particular motor is not as high pitched and shrill sounding as the previous 8 amp motors that Bissell has used in their past uprights. This machine sounds a lot more akin to the older 10 amp Bissell motors, which is to say it's not a quiet machine per se, but it doesn't have the same high pitch shrill that a lot of other vacuums at this price point have, which is very, very nice. And also, as a result, sounds better than the outgoing model, because that was my biggest problem with the outgoing model, was just how shrill it sounded. Meaning if you were in a tight room, then the sound could reverberate if there wasn't enough sound dampening and it could cause um, discomfort while you're using the machine in terms of um, auditory discomfort because your ears would hurt basically. This machine doesn't have that problem. It sounds a lot more typical, so that's not an issue. So they fixed that, that's great. And also as a result, I can tell that because of that, the motor is also better quality, so it's more likely to last. Not like I had any issues with the previous motors dying prematurely, but theoretically it's still an advantage. And finally, another improvement they made that I complained about in the previous model is this bin lid. As you can see, it's got a red bin lid. And on the older units, this was prone to having a lot of play in it, meaning when you move the bin side to side or whenever you tried to grab the bottom of the bin, it would move a lot. Meaning that if you moved it, you could potentially move it out of the way and then some dirt and dust could fall through the cracks between the actual bin and the bin lid. It's not a problem on this unit. The actual bin lid is on there much more securely and has much less play. So it's much less likely to have that issue. So that's another thing they fixed on this newer unit. Beyond that, pretty much everything else is exactly what you'd expect. The only downside to this design that they've sort of got rid of as far as feature wise is there is no user accessible post motor filter. So on the older version of this machine, there was a filter underneath here with a latch that you could press and pop up a post motor filter. Now there still is a post motor filter in this. There are filters on either side of these grills on the inside here. But the problem is that you can't access these filters unless you completely disassemble the entire motor housing. So it's something that end users aren't gonna be able to do in most circumstances. So it's definitely something where it's a little annoying that it's not user accessible, but it's something you shouldn't have to clean more often than maybe every five years. So it sh theoretically shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but I mean, because the fact is that a lot of people unfortunately do throw these machines away prematurely. But if you're planning to keep this machine for over a decade, which you definitely can if you take care of it, 
then yeah, keep in mind that at some point you might want to try to address this. Maybe take it to your local vacuum shop and have them clean that. I'm not, again, I'm not very fond of that decision because that does kind of make it a little bit more, oh, that does make it a bit less consumer friendly because now that's a barrier to entry for a lot of people who want to keep these machines long term because a lot of times taking this to a shop just isn't feasible given its low price point. But nevertheless, that is one disadvantage to this over the previous design, but it's one that you could tell Bissell was going in that direction anyways. They obviously want to make it simple for, for customers and only want customers to have to worry about this filter. And I kind of understand why, because I have seen customers take these filters out and bunch both of them up up here or bunch both of them up down here. And if you do that, the system obviously doesn't work properly. So. I kind of understand why they did it, but from a technician's perspective, that is a little bit annoying. But that's really my only complaint. Everything else on this is just as good as the machine that I previously recommended many times over the years. You've got a decent stretch hose, you've got a lightweight design, you've got a decently long core, 25 feet, could be longer, wish it was 30, but 25 is at least acceptable, unlike the Helix. And you've got a similar design to all the previous Bissels of your um, you've got the same attachments. You've got an extension wand and a crevice tool that stores inside that should be a little bit longer, but does still work. You've got a dusting and upholstery brush that is a little bit softer than it is on the previous units, so it's definitely better for dusting than the previous units, so that's another upgrade. And the turbo brush is just as lackluster as it was on the previous models. This doesn't work very well, and I don't really recommend it. It's not an issue with the vacuum. A lot of people will er erroneously cite the vacuum's power as being the reason why this doesn't turn properly. But if you put a Dyson Tangle Free Turbine or one of the older Bissell turbo brushes on this machine, it spins it up and uses it just fine. This is just a bad design turbo brush. So unfortunately, this is still not a great design. But hey, even if it's subpar, at least you have it versus not having it. Although, in my experience, I don't actually use it. I just use the brush for everything when I'm vacuuming couches. And that does bring up the fact that, the, oh, something fell out of it. Okay. So this thing cleans very well. The Turbo Patch brush, as they call it, it's just a standard brush, cleans very well. And I do notice that this is a lot smoother out of the box than it is on previous units. So if you've had a previous Bissell and you've had issues with the brush roll locking up prematurely and needing replaced, this machine is a lot more forgiving, so I feel like that could be a good upgrade. I've seen a lot of people get these where out of the box the bearings were starting to fail, and because these brush rollers aren't user serviceable, it meant the customers were, were busting through belts. So if you read a lot of reviews on this machine and similar ones, and you see people complaining about the machine throwing belts, that's why. The brush roll was just defective. This particular one doesn't appear to have that problem, and if you do have that issue, then definitely contact Bissell, and if they can't do anything, then definitely exchange the machine, because a brand new brush roll shouldn't be throwing belts. Um, and if it is, then it's also, it could be a good sign that you have the machine misadjusted. So that brings us to the topic of the height adjustment. Now on your carpet, there's a few different positions that you can use it on. Now for mine, a medium or medium to high pile is the correct adjustments. But for a lot of people, if it's a lower pile or a higher pile, you can adjust it accordingly. It's marked high carpet and bare floor, so you can adjust those previously. Previously, you can adjust those accordingly, not previously. So keep that in mind that it's not wise to use this on the lowest setting because, you know, unless of course that is the correct setting for your carpet. Apologies for the ambulance in the background. But a lot of people will put these on the lowest setting and then they'll wonder why the machine is throwing belts and that's because the machine is straining. Now what you want to do is you want to start off with it at the highest setting or at the medium setting and you want to make sure that you can hear the brush contacting the floor. If you can then, uh, then generally you want to turn it down one more notch and as long as you can still push the machine then you should be okay but generally speaking you don't want to put the machine too low because if you put the machine too low you could be putting extra strain on the belts and on the brush roll unnecessarily and over time it could cause extra wear on the machine so you want to make sure that you're adjusting this accordingly definitely play with it around and make sure that you have it on the right setting for your carpets on the back we've got a button right here to release the machine and you can press the button again to get underneath low furniture although with this whole cyclone cassette you're not going to get very far underneath furniture but you know it's 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 generally adequate, it's enough to get underneath most tables. So, of course, it better have it and not need it than need it and not have it, I suppose. Back here, you've got your power switch. Now I'm gonna turn this on, so headphone warning. 
It's going to be a little loud since I'm right by the machine, but I'm going to turn it on real quick. So as you can hear, it actually doesn't have the same high pitch shrill that the previous models had. I touched on that earlier, but that is definitely a great improvement. I can't state enough how good of an improvement that was because it makes the machine a lot more comfortable to use. Because the machine's really lightweight, it's really easy to use, it's easy to maneuver. The issue always just was the motor just not sounding good. So that's been fixed. So another great uh, thing, with this, another great aspect of this machine that I actually really like. So whenever you want to empty the machine, you've got a bin right here with a button right up here that says empty. You're going to push that and this whole cassette pops off. There's a button right down here that says release, push that and the dirt falls out into the bin. Now I'm going to do a separate video on how to maintain this machine, so I'm not going to show you how to get to all this stuff, but I will show you the filter is right up here and some stuff does like to stick to it, which isn't the greatest, but it is at least easy enough to clean. Now, it's kind of weird because sometimes I'll use these machines and these filters stay super clean, and then other times they just get dirty super quickly. I'm not really sure what the discrepancy is, but this appears to be one of the machines that seems to not have as good of a seal and tends to let a lot of dust through, so that's not ideal. But one thing that is nice is you can see there's, there's no dust on the actual motor intake, so the filter is doing its job. Whenever you're done, click that back on, and you're good to go. Now, whenever you want to use the hose, and of course the cats are playing and being obnoxious, whenever you want to use the hose, you just simply pull it out. There's a little friction lock right here, it just kind of sits in and then you can pull the hose out. There's a clip up here that you're going to want to pull the hose out of, and you want to make sure to put the hose back into it whenever you're not using it. Put any attachment on the end of this hose and you can use it. Now, a lot of people have complained of Bissell's in the past of leaving the machine in a certain spot on carpets and using the hose and then having debris get shot out of this lower hose and all over the vacuum. Now, I do have that problem once in a while, but I, for a while, whenever I was actually using these machines, I never had that problem and didn't really understand why people were complaining about it until I then did what I assume a lot of other people are doing and I would park the machine in a space and start using the tools without vacuuming the carpet underneath, and that's when it started spitting debris out. So make sure to vacuum the carpet before you actually park the machine in a spot to vacuum your couch or whatever else the case may be, because if you do that, there's not gonna be any debris for it to kick up into the brush roll and spit out this hole. So as long as you do that, you should be okay, and that shouldn't be a problem. Of course, again, when you're done with this, clip it up here. And it is worth noting that, like a lot of other machines, if you're using the hose and the machine rocks back and forth, the brush roll can tip forward and burn the carpet. But unlike a lot of the Hoovers that I've reviewed that are in a similar price point to this, this is a little bit more resistant to it, but it does still bug me enough that I tend to lean the machine backwards against whatever couch it is that I'm cleaning, so that way the brush doesn't touch. Now, there are, of course, Bissell models with a brush roll shutoff that are more expensive than this, but in this price point, you're not going to find that. So it's just something you're going to have to deal with as far as using the tools on a machine without a brush roll shut off. So with all that in mind, hello Rubes. With all that in mind, there really isn't much else for me to describe. I mean, like I said, I'm going to do a separate maintenance tutorial on this on how to change the belt and clean the filter and all that. So I'm not going to be showing all that in this video. This is just going to be overviewing the machine, letting you know my experience after using it for a few weeks, and whether or not you should buy it. Now, I've gone through my experience using it over the last few weeks, and like I kind of alluded to earlier, it's been very nice. It cleans very well, the motor pitch, like I said, makes a huge difference, it's plenty powerful without having too much suction, and the attachments, while they're still not great, it's still definitely a budget machine, they do seem to be slightly improved over the previous model, namely the dusting brush. So, that being said, do I recommend this machine? Well, of course, I recommended the previous version of this, and this machine is no exception. I really like it, and I really do recommend it. I recommend it over the standard Helix. I don't see any reason to buy the standard Helix when this machine is only a few dollars more and has so many better features, like, again, the longer cord, the longer hose, the wider width, and the better cyclonic separation, as well as the turbo brush. I don't see any reason to buy the standard Helix, and I don't think it's appropriate to do so, but... Um, unless I, I suppose unless you're only using it on carpets and don't care about using extension cords, perhaps. But even then, I still think it's better just to buy this. 
However, if you are open to bagged machines, I do think the Power Force and the uh, commercialized versions of the Power Force, like the Bissell Big Green Commercial BGU-1451T and the Sanitaire SL4110A, which as of the time I filmed this is on sale, I think both those machines are better picks than this because they're based on the older designs. So they're not going to do as well on bare floors, but they do equally as well on carpets. The build quality is a bit better and the cord is also a little bit longer and sturdier and they're bagged which is the reason why I prefer those machines. But if you prefer bagless and you want something a bit more affordable, then this is a solid choice. Again, there really isn't much to complain about because again, it's obviously trying to hit a price point and all the essentials it excels at. So I really can't complain about this machine given the fact that the few issues I complained about previously have been addressed. So I do recommend this. I will be linking it in the description below. And if you are looking for a budget bagless machine in around the 70-ish dollar price point, this is the one I'm going to recommend. There is a rewind version of this available, but I recommend just getting the standard edition as the rewind, or as the lack of a rewind on this unit means that there's one less thing that's capable of breaking. So, but of course that is an option if you so desire. I also recommend this over the Powerlifter Swivel Pet given the fact that one of the selling points of that machine was the squeegee for bare floors, given that that machine has its own issues, I don't recommend that machine anymore. I mean, I, I already didn't, but especially now that this has acquired the squeegee from that machine, I think this is a better machine than that, despite the fact that this one doesn't have a swivel neck. So, again, out of all the budget Bissell bagless machines, or just bagless machines in general, even including ones from Eureka and Hoover, this is going to be the one that I recommend. So anyways, this is Inteltech Studios signing out with probably one of the quickest reviews that I've had in a long time, mainly because there just isn't much to say. I've already touched on a lot of the aspects of this machine in my previous reviews of older models of this, and none of those thoughts have really changed. It's a great machine that is not too loud, cleans well, has an acceptably usable hose, has an acceptable length of cord, and overall is capable of lasting well over a decade if you take care of it, keep the brush wool free of hair, keep the belt changed at least every six months, keep the filter clean, don't overfill the bin, you know, all the basic stuff that you should be doing to your vacuum anyways. As long as you take care of all that, you shouldn't have any issues with this machine lasting at least a decade, if not two. So anyways, this is Inteltech Studio signing out with my in-depth review of the Bissell Power Force Turbo Pet. There's Ruby scratching herself, wanting to make herself heard before the end of the video. Ruby. Do you like the Bissell? Do you like the Bissell? Do you like the Bissell? Ooh, big stretch. Don't eat that. Hi, boobs. Hi, boobs. Do you like the Bissell? 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 Move outside. Move outside. All right, that's my cue to go. Until Tech Studio is signing out, links in the description. Have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. And I hope you all have a good one. Peace.